If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1844, Lessons from Love and Marriage, by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to ORD once again. I'm your host and narrator, Greg Audino. It's great to have you here with me today. Thank you so much for coming and doing right by yourself and your loved ones. I'll be sharing another article with you today, as I do every day. And this one comes from Courtney Carver, who tends to write a lot about personal development, especially by way of minimalism. But this post here today is all about the lessons that she's learned from love and marriage. So let's see what she's got for us as we optimize your life. Lessons from Love and Marriage by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com Please don't tell anyone, but I am a sentimental fool. I cry during chick flicks. I love a good love story. I love falling in love, and sometimes I get teary thinking about how lucky I am to be married to the man of my dreams. I met my husband before I knew what kind of man I was dreaming about. I was 29, raising my little girl by myself. I had a bunch of debt, some emotional trauma from a bad first marriage and awful divorce. I had what no one wants. Baggage. I was friends with his sister. She loved me. She loved him and she thought that we might love each other. Maybe it wasn't love right away, but it was really fun. He taught me to be more adventurous on the ski slopes and in the kitchen. I taught him that we could still have fun, even though we had to be home early on school nights. We had so many differences, but loved many of the same things. We loved to hike, ski, and travel together. We were also both extremely concerned about my daughter's happiness and what our relationship would be like for her. That focus made us slow down and really figure out what we wanted. If this wasn't going to be a forever thing, it wasn't going to be a thing at all. So we got to know each other and dated for six years. We had our ups and downs and ons and offs too, but we knew a few simple things. I loved him, he loved me, and we both loved her. In the fall of 2004, Mark proposed to me after a romantic dinner in the mountains. The next day, He proposed to my daughter. He didn't tell me he was going to do this, but he had his grandmother's wedding ring engraved to say, Ja Gaskal Dig, I love you in Swedish. He gave it to her in a tiny box, with a tiny note that had a big question, Will you be my daughter? I said yes. She said yes. And on May 21st, 2005, we were married. We celebrated with close friends and family, We told ourselves that marriage wouldn't change anything for us. We were wrong. We bought a house and started our lives as man and wife and child. We were happy. I was in love with him, in love with love, and ready to see where this journey would take us. One year later, the dragon appeared in our fairy tale. I didn't feel well. I was tired and dizzy, and the side of my face was tingly. After a month of extensive tests, I got the phone call. You have MS. All I could think of was, how am I going to tell my family that I have multiple sclerosis? I had to tell him first. I had to tell him that I didn't know what was going to happen. I had to tell him that I didn't know if I would be able to hike with him, ski with him, or even walk with him someday. About a week after my diagnosis, I did the unthinkable. I asked him to leave me. I didn't ask him to do that so that he would feel sorry for me. I didn't ask him to leave me because I wanted to do this alone. I asked him to do it because I wanted him to have a full life, and I wasn't sure if I could offer that to him anymore. I thought he deserved more than taking care of a wife with MS. I learned so much from him and our marriage. Love is not enough. Take it from an expert, it's easy to be in love, but it's not enough to sustain a long-term relationship. You need all the other stuff too. You need patience, gentleness, romance, passion, compromise, real friendship, and selflessness. 
being right is not important. Seriously, in most cases, who cares who was right? By the time you're really mad at each other, you likely can't remember the reason you got angry in the first place. It's okay to just kiss and make up. Not everything needs to be resolved. Actions speak louder than words, but say the words anyway. When my husband says, you look beautiful, or sends me a text that says, I can't wait to see you tonight, it makes me feel special and more loving. Say I love you every day, even when you're not feeling it. Marriage at its best is simple. (laughs) Wow, I can't believe I said that. I thought marriage was supposed to be really complicated and near impossible to hold on to. I was wrong. Marriage is complicated and near impossible to hold on to when you stop thinking about each other and when you stop thinking about marriage. Keep it simple. And if you notice things are crazy complicated, pare down. Like you would clean out a closet, clean out the things that are getting in the way of being married. And finally, less stuff means more genuine connection. By getting rid of our stuff, paying off our debt, and spending less, we can finally zero in on what each other needs the most. Even though we've known each other for 11 years, we're getting to know each other better because we have the time and space to pay attention. I'm forever grateful that he did not take me up on my offer to leave. He's seen me at my worst and inspired me to be my best. By staying focused on the most important things in our lives, we fight MS together, and we're working towards an amazing future and enjoying ourselves along the way. I think we told ourselves that marriage wouldn't change a thing because things were so good. Things were so good and we didn't want to disturb what we had. Instead, we made what we had better. Each day, I think, I can't believe I love him more than I did before. Every day I think about how lucky I am to be living my very own love story. As one of the main characters of a simple love story, I know that my intentions and my actions support my marriage. My husband is amazing, but he can't do it alone. We may encounter bumps in the road and a few surprises, but together we will celebrate and protect our marriage and our family. You just listened to the post titled, Lessons from Love and Marriage by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com Now, it's no secret that we are all busy these days, and sometimes we find ourselves with a bit too much on our plates. Well, luckily, one of our new sponsors is here to help you save time and in a healthy way. Introducing HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store, and instead count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And HelloFresh Market makes summer entertaining a cinch. Make your home the hangout place this summer with crowd-pleasing favorites like a backyard bratwurst bar or maybe a tangy key lime pie. Their fast and fresh recipes are ready in just 15 minutes or less, plus HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout. And my favorite part would have to be that HelloFresh is actually an environmentally friendly choice too. They provide pre-portioned ingredients, which really helps to cut down on food waste. So, go to HelloFresh.com slash Optimal50 and use code Optimal50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Optimal50 and use code Optimal50, that's 5 for 50% off plus free shipping. And thanks so much to Courtney for this article and this humbling reminder of what life can entail, even when we are living out our wildest dreams. I'm sure this post was relatable for couples who have been together long enough to experience some turbulence, and perhaps it also served as a reality check for couples who haven't gotten there quite yet. But wherever you are in your journey with your partner, uh, or any loved one really, you have a chance today to look at your relationship and Think about one part of it that's troubling. Maybe it's something that's kept in hiding, or maybe it's out in the open. You know, maybe it's a big deal, maybe it's a little deal. But either way, think about how that one part could be used to foster greater connection. What opportunity lies within it to be vulnerable or to get to know your partner on a new level? There's a lot of talk about how we must lean into these moments in our own lives, you know, embracing hardship approaching it differently and gaining strength from doing so. So, for the purposes of our show, which is all about relationships, how might we do the same with our loved ones and see everything as happening for us as opposed to happening to us? 
Think about that, everyone. It's time to get going for today, but I appreciate you showing up and choosing your relationships once again. You've made it to the end of another episode. I thank you for that. I recognize you for that. And I also hope you will join me again to do the same tomorrow. That's where your optimal life awaits.